Hey Pixels, in this two-part tutorial, we're going to design and prototype a photo editing app in Adobe XD. If you've ever wanted to be the next Instagram or Photoshop, here's a beginner-friendly app UI to help get you started. First, we're going to add two iPhone X artboards in Adobe XD. We'll also use the artboard guide so that we have a 16 pixel margin on each side. Finally, we'll apply a dark background color to both artboards. Now that we've set up the artboards, let's design the home screen. Our home screen will consist of a header, gallery, and a bottom import button. To design the header, we'll first draw a borderless rectangle that's 375 by 96 pixels. On the left-hand side, we'll draw a square that's 24 pixels. This will serve as the icon placeholder for our hamburger menu. We'll do the same on the right-hand side, which will be a placeholder for our import icon. In XD, we'll use the plugin icons for design to grab both icons sized at 24 pixels. We'll group the placeholder and icon, then we'll remove the border and fill color for the placeholder object. Finally, we'll color the icons white. In the center of the header, we'll add a logo to brand our app. That's all for our home screen header. Let's move on to design our photo gallery. The photo gallery for our app will store all the photos the user imports via the import buttons. To design our gallery, we'll draw a borderless square that's 164 pixels with a border radius of four pixels. We'll turn on the repeat grid by hitting Command or Control R to make a 2x4 grid. I already have photos that I want to use for the gallery. We could use a plugin to import the photos, but I'm very particular with the photos I want to use, so I hand selected them from unsplash.com. I have the photos in a folder ready to be placed, so I'm just going to select all the photos drag and then drop them onto the repeat grid. Now we'll ungroup the repeat grid. That's all for the gallery. Now we'll design the import button. To design the import button, we'll first copy and paste the header background rectangle by hitting Command or Control C and then Command or Control V. Let's place the object near the bottom of the artboard. Now let's draw an icon placeholder that's 48 pixels. We'll copy and paste the plus icon from the header and place it in the center of the icon placeholder. Then we'll resize it so that it's 24 pixels. Remember to group the icon layers and remove the fill and border of the icon placeholder. That's all for the home screen. Now let's design the edit screen. On the edit screen, we'll need to design a header, image area, filter options, and editing tools. To design the header on the edit screen, we'll copy and paste the header background and import icon from the home screen and place it at the top of the edit artboard. We'll move the import icon to the left side and then rotate it so that it turns into an X icon. Now, we'll write the word save and apply the button character style to create the save button. 
Below the header, we'll design the area where our edited image will be displayed. We'll be using a photo from the home screen photo gallery, so I'll copy it and then with the edit artboard selected, I'll paste it onto the artboard. Again, we'll place it below the header. I'll hold down shift while I'm expanding the image to resize the image proportionally. I'll also remove the border radius by setting it to zero. Below the photo, we need to design the filter intensity slider. Let's draw a borderless rectangle that's 375 by 48 pixels. We'll give it a color fill. Next, we'll draw another borderless rectangle that's 343 by 2 pixels. We'll apply a linear gradient that's black on the left and white on the right. Then we'll draw a 24 pixel circle that's yellow and place it on the left hand side of the line. Moving on to our filters, we need more room to design them, so we'll design the filters on the pasteboard and then move them to the artboard as needed. First, let's draw a borderless rectangle that's 375 by 197 pixels. We'll then draw a borderless circle that's 56 pixels and then we'll duplicate it by hitting Command or Control D on the keyboard. Below, we'll add text for each filter applying the label character style. Now, we'll turn on the repeat grid to create 8 filters with 16 pixels of padding. We'll move the top circle over so that we can drag and drop our image onto the bottom circle layer. For the top circle layer, we'll head on over to the appearance panel and apply the color burn blend mode. Now, let's ungroup the repeat grid. The first filter option will be normal, so we'll leave it alone. For the rest of the filters, we'll select various colors and name each filter accordingly. Feel free to be as creative with this and choose a different blend mode or create really unique names for each filter. Once all filters are complete, we can select them all, group them by hitting Command or Control G on your keyboard, and then turn on Horizontal Stack. Now we can rearrange our filters. Finally, we can select the filter group and turn on Horizontal Scroll. We can adjust the width of the scroll so that it fits the width of the artboard. If we preview this artboard, we can see that we have this really cool scrolling effect to see all of our filters. The editing tools for our edit screen will have various icons that represent actions that users can perform on their photos, such as applying filters, adjustments, cropping, adding text, and adding stickers. We'll draw a borderless rectangle that's 375 by 96 pixels. Then, we'll draw a borderless square to contain the icons that's 24 pixels. We'll use the repeat grid to create a total of 5 icon placeholders and adjust padding to 56 pixels. Ungroup the grid. We'll use the icons for design plugin to grab all the icons we need.
We need to indicate to users that the filter has been selected and that we can either apply or remove the selected filter. To do this, we'll grab the rectangle background from the photo editing tools. We'll grab the close icon from the header and place it on the left hand side to create a remove filter icon. Then, we'll duplicate the icon, place it on the right-hand side to create the Apply Filter icon. We'll swap the X out for a checkmark icon. We'll write Filter in the center of the rectangle. That's how you design a photo editing app in Adobe XD. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll bring this app to life by using the latest prototyping features in Adobe XD. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new. Subscribe to Excel Pixel for more great videos on design, code, and tech. I'll see you in the next video.